Hi everyone, our topic today is outliers. Outliers are unwanted observations in a dataset whose presence can be problematic because it can affect the results of your analysis. Their presence in dataset can be due to many factors and their positions are usually at distance from the normal data stream. And because of this, it becomes mandatory that outliers must be identified and eliminated from your dataset before you can proceed to perform any parametric test. Usually, for any parametric test results to be valid, one of the basic assumptions which your data must satisfy is that your data should not have any significant outliers. Fortunately, there are statistical procedures to find and eliminate this outlier from the data sets. So in this video, I will be demonstrating how to identify outliers in data set using Tukis Hinge's approach in XPSS. My name is Titoken and this is Titoken Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. Please, let's encourage education and learning by subscribing to this channel and thanks for doing so. This is our data for this lesson and it consists of only one dependent continuous variable length. This data is already loaded into XPSS. If you don't know how to load data into XPSS, please use the link I gave in the description section below to see my videos on introduction to XPSS for beginners to see and learn how to load data into XPSS. Now, proceed to the menu bar and click Analyze. From the drop-down sub-menu, put your cursor on Descriptive Statistics. And from the drop-down options, click Explore to open the Explore dialog box. Here, our variables are in the box on the left. So click on the dependent variable length and then click on the transfer arrow key to move it to the dependent list box on the right. Then click on the statistics button and from the statistics dialog box that opens, uncheck the box for descriptives because you don't need the results of the descriptive statistics for now. Then check the box for percentiles. This selection will produce the table of percentiles ranging from the 5th to the 95th percentiles. Then click continue to close the dialog box. Now come down to the display panel and select the radio button for statistics. And this will gray out the plot button, meaning only percentile tables will be produced. Finally, click OK and the requested table of percentile results are produced in the output window, as you can see. Here in the output window, two tables are produced, the case processing summary table and the percentile table. From the case processing summary table, you can see that the size of our data is 23 and there is no missing data. But before I proceed to the percentile table, let me quickly introduce you to the following Tukis Hinge's equations, which he defined as fences for outliers. F1 equals Q75 plus 1.5 multiplied by open bracket Q75 minus Q25 close bracket. And F2 equals Q25 minus 1.5 multiplied by open bracket Q75 minus Q25 close bracket. In these equations, F1 is fence for upper limit of outliers, F2 is fence for lower limit of outliers, Q75 is the 75th percentile or the third quarter, Q25 is the 25th percentile or the first quarter, and the bracket of Q75 minus Q25 is the interquartile range. Now, using these equations, XPSS considers any data value to be an outlier if it is greater than or equal to the upper limit F1, or if it is equal to or less than the lower limit F2. Please, you should take note of these descriptions because they are very important. Now, let's proceed to the percentile table. 
In the percentile table, you are to concentrate on the Tukis Hinges percentile row and consider only the 25th and the 75th percentile values. So, the Tukis Hinges 25th percentile is 15.5973, while the 75th percentile is 22.6117. Now, let's solve the F1 and F2 equations directly in XPSS. Proceed to the menu bar and click on Transform. From the drop-down sub-menu, click on Compute Variable to open the Compute Variable dialog box. In the Target Variable box, write F1 in the empty space. Then, move to the Numeric Expression box and enter the value of the percentiles according to the F1 equation for upper limit. That is 22.6117 plus 1.5 multiplied by open bracket 22.6117 minus 15.5973 close bracket. Please be sure the digit you entered here are correct for the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile as appropriate for the F1 equation. Then click OK and the result is produced as a new variable F1 repeated 23 times as a column vector in the data view window. Now let's repeat this calculation process for the F2 equation. Again, proceed to the menu bar and click on Transform. And then click on Compute Variable to open the Compute Variable dialog box. As you can see, the previous calculation is still here. For simplicity, just edit it as appropriate for the lower limit F2 equation. So in the Target Variable box, I will change the F1 to F2 for lower limit. Then move to the numeric expression box and just highlight and copy the 25th percentile, which is 15.5973, and paste it here to replace the 75th percentile. Then change the plus to minus like this to make the equation as appropriate for F2 equation so that the equation now becomes 15.5973 minus 1.5 multiplied by open bracket 22.6117 minus 15.5973 close bracket. Again, Please be sure the digit you entered here are correct for the 25th percentile and 75th percentile as appropriate for the F2 equation. Then click OK and the result is produced as a new variable F2 repeated 23 times as a column vector in the data view window. Now let's see the new variables that is the F1 and the F2 in the data view window. As you can see in the data view window, the F1 is 33.13 and is repeated for all observations, while the F2 is 5.08 and is equally repeated for all observations. This makes it easy for inspection of the data row by row. This means that the outliers in the data are the data values greater than or equal to 33.13 or the outliers are the data values equal to or less than 5.08. So what you are required to do now is to inspect the data to identify data values that could be greater than 33.13 or exactly 33.13 for fence 1 and data value that is exactly 5.08 
or less than 5.08 for fence 2. As you inspect the raw data, you can see that the data does not have the exact values of 33.13 and 5.08 respectively, but definitely have data values that are greater than 33.13 or less than 5.08. The data greater than 33.13 are 69.01 and 69.79, while the data less than 5.08 is only 2.97 in the data set. So, from the data, the outliers are now 69.01, 69.79, 69.79, and 2.97 at the observed points 8, 22, and 15 respectively. If we arrange it in order of appearance in the data, the outlier's observed point will be 8, 15, and 22. However, there are many ways to handle outliers in dataset. One of the most common methods is to delete the outliers permanently immediately they are identified, especially on the condition that they are imputed by error and are not supposed to originally be part of the data. So let's assume that the three outliers we just identified in this lesson were entered into the data by error. So I will proceed and delete them. To do so, hold down the control key and click on the row containing the outliers to highlight them like this. Then, right click on any of the highlighted row and from the options that pops up, click clear to delete the outliers permanently. This means there is no longer outliers in this data. So, this data is now clean and free of outliers. You cannot receive this data as new data set. Interestingly, you have learned how to identify outliers in data set and you can actually replicate this demonstration for cases where you have more than one dependent variables. But right now, we have come to the end of this video and I hope you were able to follow the demonstrations and also understood the interpretations. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we begin to send you notifications every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.